the Bible? Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, brothers and sisters, the Hebrew and Bible Academy, you are invited. All praises be to the Most High, Ahia, Asha, Ahia. In the name of Yeshia, Warawak. The Most High God of Israel, name is Ahia, his son is Yeshia. And we thank him through the Holy Spirit to be before you this coming Sabbath with a blessed lesson shalom do us a favor brothers and sisters as you enter into the sabbath lesson please hit the like button please 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 all right jumping right in before we go into the lesson being that we are behind the time real quick being that we are a little tardy a little late i apologize Let's jump right in. And shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's jump right in. Our Hebrew and Bible Academy theme for this coming session. For the next session. Okay, I want you all to see this. For the next session of our Hebrew and Bible Academy, the theme will be making it through Jacob's trouble. The next Hebrew and Bible Academy starts on Sunday, April 21st, 2024 at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, New York Time. At last, for this day is great, so that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30 and seven. The problem is the world has been intentionally confused. They have been intentionally confused with understanding who is Jacob. But you know what? I'm gonna clear up a lot of that in this uh, lesson today. The Hebrew and Bible Academy is a three month online biblical course with weekly online lessons every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We teach the original Hebrew language, including conversational Hebrew. We also provide an in-depth Bible teaching on the true history of the world and real-time prophetic world news from around the globe. Now, what you can expect this next academy, brand new lessons identifying the Gentile nations, and their intentions in the earth right now, as it was at the Tower of Babel. We're going to talk about that. The final battle between Esau and Jacob. Well, we're living in, in a time where Esau is posing as Jacob, actually. Okay, so, hey, the best way to infiltrate is to become what you've oppressed. To become the prophecy of the prophetic people you are destroying. The final battle between Esau and Jacob, identifying the cult within Christianity. For the first time, we'll teach this lesson. Christianity was hijacked 
by the Satanist. The brand of Christianity we see today isn't the churches Christ set up before the fall of Jerusalem. Okay? And we're going to go into the cult infiltration of the Christianity, of Christianity that came directly from the Vatican, the Roman Empire. It was a cult, a secret cult that they were worshiping Satan in caves and all that. And the ideology of that dark doctrine has been infused within Christianity to destroy it. We're going to also go into the truth about Mecca. The satanic rituals at the Kaaba stone. Also, we're going to let you know and break it down that this is just not about Arabs at Mecca. Esau helped create Mecca because it's a vortex. Okay, it's a, believe it or not, a gate between the dark world and this world. Okay, when they walk around into the ring of power, which is walking around Mecca, they're opening up a force where demons and spirits connect to the elite over in the Middle East and as well as the Vatican. And we're going to talk about that. How Christ will guide us through Jacob's trouble will be a complete lesson. Christ gave us detailed, detailed instruction coded within prophecy that if we follow what Christ said, it's the angels guiding us through the trouble we're, experience, we're experiencing on the earth, okay? This is why you didn't see us fall for the last thing they did when they shut the earth down, okay? We're being guided through, folks. It's a simple process, and we're going to talk about that. Now, after I break it down in the academy, of course, on the street and other areas I'll be teaching, including online, we're going to lay this out also so that the world can understand, those who are in Christ can understand in the world how to navigate through these times. You have to know who to trust and who not to trust, according to not the gathering of Christ church, according to Christ himself. In the academy, in a few weeks, we're going to lay this out. We're going to lay it out, bullet points, all of that. So if you're in a scenario, when you're in a scenario of confusion, you're not to panic. Because if you panic within the state of confusion, you'll be relegated to Satan's and Satan's priests, priest solutions. And the priesthood tongue of Satan is media. It's media. Let me put this out there again. Satan's tongue is media. See? It's media. Media comes through the word medium. The craft of sorcery was forbidden in Torah. Okay? So the tongue of Satan is media. If you understand Christ's words, you'll under, you will be, be able to identify his traps. And I'm going to talk about that. We're going to lay it out. Okay? Because the media is guiding our people step by step into a serious descent. It's coordinated. It's orchestrated. Hence the reason why I'm going into this lesson today to clear it all up. The man of sin. The man of sin revealed. Going back. How to endure through the seven trumps. And I don't think it's, 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 it's any coincidence that the president of the United States, well, the next president that will lead to division and civil war, which is not in his power. It's really the European uh, dissolving of the United States. 
It's the EU, the Ten Horns, the Vatican's. That's right, disassembling the United States. That's what we are in the midst of now. So it's no coincidence near the last Trump, there's a politician by the name of Trump. Right? So I'm going to go be going into enduring through the seven Trumps. This is way deeper. This is way higher in prophecy than a man called Donald Trump. It's really signaling to the world, the times we're living in. The seven Trump, the seventh Trump is upon us. So we're going to break down how to endure through the seven Trumps. And we're going to also go into the dark side of Islam. The satanic priesthood of the Persians. Before it was called Islam, it was rooted in Babylonian mysticism. And in a nutshell, it was called Persian mythology. You can call it Persian mythology. They try to move it into mythology. And they call it mythology so that they can teach it within Satan's universities, these so-called schools of higher learning. But it wasn't mythology at all. The dark side of Islam, that and more will be rolled out, detailed, and explained in, a, in your next academy. You don't want to miss this academy. I'm going to tell you. By no means. Everything you see within this particular outline, nothing taken out. All these scenarios we're talking about, all these bullet points within the academy that I'm talking about right now will be dived into. So if you want to be a part of it, go to historytimes.org and enroll. It's very cheap. What you do, support the work, and above all, the research belongs to you. Once we give it to you, even though it's our property, as far as sending it out to you, you have this for your personal study to navigate through Jacob's trouble. Hebrew and Bible Academy, there's nothing like it in the earth. Go to historytimes.org. I would like to see you there in a few weeks. And a matter of fact, um, this week, tomorrow, actually, I'll be going into a roundtable discussion, the battle between man and woman. Why? Because the world powers has intentionally separated Adam and Eve. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. Which is the image of God on earth, man and woman together against the freaks okay somehow the freaks have have taken over media and have convinced our people to go at war with the opposite gender or the opposite sex think about that I need you to think about that, where there's a war between man and woman orchestrated by a bunch of freaks. And the whole earth has fallen for it. Man and woman together is the image of God. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. It's a bunch of finger pointing going on, but guess what? What we're not seeing in all of this is sacrifice between the man and woman. What they're willing to, to actually endure to keep the image of God together. Folks, we're living in a time, we're living amongst the weakest generation since the beginning of humanity. They've turned the whole world into cowards. They've made the whole world weak. And the only way to do so is to break man and woman. Everything is encompassed in, that, in the image of God when man and woman is together. Love, courage, endurance. And on top of that, if you have the image of God together working for one another, both have something to die for and to live for. 
And this is why they broke man and woman. This is why they've, they've broken the union of marriage in the earth. Because now if there's no man or woman to look forward to protecting, then there's no country that you are courageous enough to protect. If there's no family, why should I fight for the country? If I, if, if, if I can't look forward to it, a continual name. So this is how they've broken us down piece by piece, starting with the, the, the first dominion on earth, man and woman. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow in our round table. Elder Lawyer, let's jump right in. Yes, sir. Shalom, Elder. How are you doing uh, today? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, sir. I'm doing well. Okay. How about yourself? Great. I'm blessed. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, real quick for you. Hold on. Blow this up a little bit for you. There it is. Thank you. The water. So yeah, Elder Lawyer, I'm at the tail end of this little um, this little cold I had to get over. So I just mm -hmm. want to be on the safe side before we come together uh, for the, the you know in the academy tomorrow. So that's why we're doing it split screen today. Yes, sir. But it's all good. The word of the Most High will still get be get proclaimed throughout the earth, right? Yes, sir. If you will, Elder, let's start off with the Hebrew Credo, if you may. All right. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Hayanawa Ahaya Achad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We thank you and bless you for another week uh, before, uh, before the saints with the Bible open today, a Sabbath lesson where the man of sin is revealed. Now, let's first start off with identifying, identifying Satan's greatest tool. Now, in order for you to understand the tool he's using in the earth, you must understand according to Bi the Bible, what's his greatest tool, right? Revealing the man of sin. Well, Satan's greatest tool is confusion. Elder lawyer, if you will, let's go to Corinthians real quick, which states that the Most High is not the author of confusion. Yes, sir. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Okay, let me pull it up for the brothers and sisters here. Follow us. This may be one of the more detailed explained lessons to date as far as a Sabbath lesson goes. First Corinthians chapter and verse of the lawyer. Yes, sir. 14 and 33. 14 verse 33. All right. Let's go there. Let me go here one second, Elder Lawyer. Let's pull it up for all to see. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 14 and 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. So if it states in the Bible that God is not the author of confusion, Listen to this. 
we have to understand what people in the earth is administering through academia as well as religion and all these others confusion. And if there's only two masters, Satan must be, be behind the powers of the world. The most high is not the author of confusion. It's confusion to have one believe in their minds that it's okay to call a man a woman or a woman a man and teach that in schools. Regardless of how someone personally think about themselves, to impose that on the world is a ball of confusion. So then we have to ask, who has the, uh, I would say, the communication power to promote such confusion, right? And that's just on one angle. There's another angle through all of this. Through confusion, you can make good evil and evil good. Through confusion, you could actually, brothers and sisters, become an entirely different race of people at the same time destroying that race you've hijacked. In the midst of confusion, you can bomb tens of thousands of people only to use word salad and a built-in excuse by using one word, a group, to actually absolve yourselves of any judgment. See, and that's the power of confusion. So let's look into confusion real quick. Let's look into confusion. First, I'll use uh, the Oxford uh, definition of it, and then we'll go into the biblical, the Greek definition of it, right? So we know the Most High is not the author of confusion. So if there's some confusion being thrown out there, right, we know it's satanic. Organized chaos, right? So it's we know that there's no in between. There's only two, good or evil. There's no in between, right? There's only God when it comes to the powers or masters of this earth or in the world. There's only two masters. The master on high, which is the most high God, and the master below, who's Satan. There's no in-between. Anything in-between is confusion. Now, of course, the powers that be would like you to believe that there's nuances. No, it isn't. It's simple. So let's go into confusion according to Oxford, Oxford's definition. Confusion. Confusion. Now, this is what Satan used to, de to destroy and to deceive the world using media. Confusion is a lack of understanding. So if you don't understand something fully, you'll fall for Satan's solutions. And I can use when the earth set, shut down as the prime example to why they need the world confused. So they need you confused. Right? Lack of understanding. Uncertainty. So they'll use all these different uh, 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 scenarios, politically or otherwise, 
to off tilter or off center the people. It's our God's plan for his chosen to stay centered on a foundation. See? And we're going to get there in a moment. The tool they use as a weapon is lack of understanding, uncertainty, and then there's a what? There's an example of this in a sentence. There seems to be some confusion about which system does what. Like when it came to time for when there was a cold in the earth and everyone had, was undecisive on what to do. See, the most high is not the author of confusion. If you're with God in the Bible, you know what to do. Period. So they needed an air of confusion so that the world could fall for their solutions. And now there's so many people in regret now who listen to them within a time of uncertainty. Common sense would tell people, even if you didn't have the Bible, that when you don't know what to do, do nothing at all. That's common sense because at least I'm satisfied with my current state. I know what this feels like. I know what I'm dealing with right now. I just have to get what I'm dealing with right now through the trouble, through, through whatever confusion they're putting out there. So if I'm confused to what to do, I do nothing at all because the most high is not the author of confusion. Satan's priest through the media uses confusion to have people self-sabotage or destroy themselves. The solution is usually grave. If I have the media continually on a regular basis telling me that they believe there's too many people in the earth and that through global warming, if they don't get rid of the people, then the whole earth is destroyed and they will not be able to sustain their power. Then I know anything they pushing out there leads to less people. Right? So how do one off themselves? You off yourself and give them plausible deniability by volunteering to their solutions. You can't tell me in one vein that the earth, even though the earth has enough for all of her children, let me make that clear. You can't tell me in, in one vein that we have to do something about all these people. And then on the other side, you're saying that here's something that we're going to put out there to save the people. So the only people fall for this are the people who are not grounded and have been what? Confused. Right? More. Number one, when you don't know what to do, do nothing. I'm giving you some wisdom here. If you want to keep your body alive, if you want to keep a sound mind, when you don't know, listen, I'm not telling you right now to do what we're, what we're saying to do out of the Bible, even though if God says out of the Bible, you should take heed, but I'm not even saying that. What I'm saying is common sense. If you're on the fence with anything in the future, if you don't know what to do, do nothing. Or you're going to regret it. Because at least I'm not violating my God. 
Well, I'm, I'm not sure, but if I do what they tell me to do under the air of confusion, there's a good chance I'm compromising my relationship with God. Okay? So if I'm confused, I'm doing nothing. I pray. I wait. I fast. I get directed by the Most High to oppose all the signaling that's in the earth. Right? More. The state of being bewildered. The state of being unclear in one's mind about something. Unclear in one's mind about something. Right? What's that? Um, right? Unclear in one, one's mind. Now, I'm using when the earth shut down a few years ago because that's the perfect example that we could all relate to, folks. Out of nowhere... The whole earth was unclear about what something was. Folks, it was satanic. The whole thing was satanic. And they understood the majority of the earth, billions of people would fall for the confusion because they were actually under the spirit of confusion. Satan. These are the same people who allowed Confusion, the festa amongst society. So what happens when they shut the earth down? Right? You, you're the one that uh, allowing these crazy arguments about man, woman, and, and, and trans rights and all this other stuff. We are allowing all of this confusion amongst our children and wonder why that when something happens where it's life or death, you're confused. Only those who was under the signal of Satan, only those who were not standing on God's principles fell for it. Unclear in one's mind about something. She looked about her in confusion. Who could make a life or death situation in the midst of confusion? Who would even ask people to make decisions, life or death, in the midst of confusion? Satan, along with Satan's priests. The Most High usually would say, well, listen, when, when the prophets and others were uncertain about something, the Most High would say, well, okay. Take a space to fast, pray, think, right? Be grounded. The most I would dare have one of his, his elect make a decision in panic without full clarity. So I believe when all that went down, folks, that was a clear distinction between those who were under God and those who were under the power of Satan, the man of sin. And what I'm going to tell you, the orchestrators were intentional. They are priests that must be exposed. Okay. This is a religious attack. And the only reason we could be attacked under this confusion is because the man of sin in this earth cannot be revealed. A matter of fact, they have set the table where you can't even identify and expose the man of sin, even when he's caught red handed. You cannot even identify that there's a cabal working under Satan to destroy the earth. But Christ. But Christ himself in the Bible. Exposed them, and this is why they hate Christ within their religion. And this is why they, they made a concerted effort to get the Bible out of our schools before pushing 
progressive liberalism. Because the Bible was our foundation to measure the world by, to measure the education by, to measure all ideologies by, because we would, we would measure what they were teaching through a moral compass. So they strategically got the Bibles out of the schools. So to confuse the children, now look at our children. Look at the world. This was their plan. I call them in the academy, the invisible man. The only man the world can't talk about. Without being what? Without being utterly destroyed. Satan, I'm going to tell you, Satan protects his priesthood. Let me tell you, their priesthood under Satan is so strategic and diabolical that they in 2024 can make a child of, of slaves the face of of human trafficking. This is how meticulous and diabolical they are. That they can make the face, the face of, of, of human trafficking out of one of the children of slaves. How can you claim that any of our people could be human traffickers. What was this? What was this? The people behind human trafficking have so much power through media, they can flip everything around and have our people look at a black man as the face of human trafficking. The people who are responsible for the most heinous human trafficking since the world began. You see, and this is what happens, folks, when the world is confused. Whose names were on the slave ships that was transporting our people? What religion did they follow? Now, of course, in the movies, they make you believe that it was white Christian men who were responsible for slavery. They'll allow you to talk about the white man. They'll allow you to talk about uh, 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 you can call the white man a devil all day long if you believe that white man is a Christian. You can talk about black people all day long. But there's one group that you cannot talk about. I need y'all to think about that. They don't even mind you talking about a white man, folks, if he's Christian. Because, they, because what they're trying to do continually is attack the spirit of the only man, a black man, mind you, who exposed them. Who exposed them. So they don't mind you talking about a white Christian because they hate Christ anyway. And they hate any man, black, white, or indifferent who would exalt Christ as Lord because Christ have been prophesied to destroy, to, to, to totally destroy their God, Samuel, Satan. So I tell you, I'm breaking this down from the rooter to the tutor for you today. Masters of deception. They got us running around looking at P. Diddy as the face of human trafficking. Huh? 
how can our people fall for this? Whose names was on the slave ships? Whose names were on the bill of sales? Who was negotiating the contracts between ports? Huh? Who? And you notice, folks, You can tell the priesthood that Satan has been protecting for so long because they're the only people you can't talk about. You can, guess what? You can, you can use an N word. You can talk about black people. You can talk about the degradation of black people. A matter of fact, they'll give the machine, which is the music industry to promote the debauchery and evil and, and darkness within our community as if that's our true image. You can even talk about the white man and call the white man the devil and all this other. And no one can, no one will out there will say that's hate. That's anti this or anti that. You notice that? Well, folks, let me tell you. Huh? And, and I got this from John Hopkins University, actually. Huh? I got this from John Hopkins University, right? I'm actually uh, a paid member of Just Tour with, with theologians and, and the academia get white papers and all of that. And see, from the, from the John Hopkins University press, they break down a lot of what they don't teach in our schools, Jews and the Negro slavery in the Old South. 1789, and this was before there was any such man as Hitler, in 1865, showing the heinous crimes that was being done against our people through those who were in, who were in charge of the ports, who were in charge of the slave bills, who were in charge of the ships, who were in charge of the trade. And guess what? This is not me saying this. The source publication here is what? The American... His Jewish Historical Society. Now, let me pull this out there. Put this out there. I'm, I don't have an issue with any group out there. I have an issue with inequity. That they allow our image we are the children of Israel to be dragged through the mud. But yet, there's no equal uh, observing of a particular group as they would do our people. That's inequitable. Okay? That's my problem. Jews and Negro slavery in the Old South. Break, it breaks it down in this whole thing between 1789 and 1865. How the corporations were actually established off of our slave trade. And the people who was able to establish banks and all that throughout the earth having years of our people, the children of Israel, as slaves work for free. And now all of a sudden they can, you could, you know, elder lawyer, they can wave a magic wand and make our people the face of human trafficking. Ryan Garcia, the boxer is even coming out about all of this. How they've been moving his people around since the beginning, since the Vatican came over here to the Americas. And now children are being touched in all this under folks, a religious ideology that no one is speaking about. Everybody talking about P. Diddy right now, right? And right now, New York Post, Nickelodeon hired or worked with five accused molesters. 
March 28th. Look at this. Nickelodeon. Our children grew up looking at Nickelodeon. And it was filled with people like this. Brian Peck. An acting coach who worked with Nickelodeon stars pleaded no contest to two sexual abuse charges. Where's Homeland Security landing on his lawn? Huh? Where, where, where is it? Brian Peck. On and on and on. And folks, they'll have you believe that these are just singular, isolated instances. But if you go into the Bible and look under Moloch, you'll see it's a religious practice. And guess what? Even if you go into to the Talmud, there's some questionable things there concerning the age and all that of consent. So here it is. We're going to break it down today. What I'm not going to allow. What I'm not going to allow is for them to paint our people as the face of evil. When they're the orchestrators of it. So in order to understand this orchestration, it goes back to the same book they banned out of schools. The Bible. We have to understand them by understanding the plan of their, their Lord, their God, Satan. Okay, and let me put it right out. If you don't confess Christ is Lord, if you don't believe Christ is the Messiah, I don't care what your religion is. You are a Satanist. Right. I don't care if you talk about some in-between spirit, some God spirit. If you talk of that garbage, talking about you're part of the universe, you will burn in hell. If you don't confess that Christ is the Messiah, that he's the king that's going to, going, going to resolve all of this in judgment, you are a Satanist. It doesn't matter if you are a Buddhist. It doesn't matter if you are a Muslim. It doesn't matter if you follow Judaism. Mm -hmm. See, because you're not going to confuse us. I don't care if you are Hindu. You are a Satanist. And see, that's why we have to just make clear, fundamental lines so to destroy the confusion. Because when you draw the line with Christ, it works on either side. It exposes the dark side that have always worked against Christ and his people. And then it exposed the so-called Christians who claim to be Christ, but yet refuse to follow God's law. Christ have always been the, the dividing line. And this is why the man of sin hates Christ. Huh? Let's go now. Let's go. So let's break it down according to prophecy first if you will, elder lawyer. So in order to understand what the man of sin, the priesthood they're using on the earth, in order to understand what their plans are, you have to understand the prophecies concerning us. Why are they so concerned with our people? Why do we live rent free in all the other nations heads. Why? You know why folks? Because they know all prophecy when it comes to the word is speaking of a specific people. And these same people, the lost tribes of Israel 
were prophesied out of Torah and Tanakh to one day rise from the ashes and rule the earth under Christ. That's why. So they would be responsible for the confusion. So to, to attack and destroy our people before the prophecy is fulfilled. So let's go into the prophecy. Elder lawyer, if you will, let's go to the book of Daniel. Yes, sir. Let's go to the book of Daniel. And Daniel 12 is where we're going, lawyer. Mm -hmm. Okay, put, put this on so I can hear you here. All right. Elder lawyer, I need you to go to Daniel 12, All right? Yes, sir. And let's start at the first verse, please. Yes, sir. The book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as was never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that what? That should be found written in the book. Mm -hmm. So so there's a book in heaven, folks, for those who choose to do what's right, morally according to the to God's law, who follows Christ. So at the very end, and we're living in that time, and guess what? If the people within Judaism read Torah and Tanakh, they know this. They understand this. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Now, why is it Michael? Because Christ used Michael to battle for the children of Israel within the earth. Mm -hmm. Under realm wars. If it wasn't for the celestial Christ used to protect us, they would have destroyed our people already. But just like what we read in the book of Job, there's certain things their master cannot do without permission. Their master is Satan. Though so the permission is allowed when our people are subjected to sin. And this is why, that's right, they use the industry to promote sin amongst our people, which gives them access to destroy us. See, that's the rules of engagement. And it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Folks, that's happening now. And there, sh there, sh there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, read. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So that means all of our people aren't going to make it, only those who believe in Christ and have accepted Christ as Savior. See? Read. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And that's speaking directly of what the first resurrection and the second death. Mm -hmm. When the Most High raised those who are in Christ, who have passed already in the resurrection. Some shall be raised to life immortal on earth upon Christ's return. But at the end of the thousand year reign, others who deny Christ will be raised for the final judgment, which is labeled the second death. Read. Three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So those who turn the people to righteousness, follow God's law, follow Christ, not this confusion they're putting out there, Christ will what? He will personally reward those who are willing to fight against darkness to turn the people to righteousness. See? 
And it says, and they shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So what people in the earth is pushing righteousness, folks? Is it the people we see on TMZ? Is it Vlad on Vlad TV? Are they not pushing debauchery, destruction? Read four. Verse four. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. And we're living in the age of knowledge now. So the Most High had, had a lot of, of these prophecies sealed until now. But guess what? It's no excuse now. The Most High have broken the seals in heaven. And if you want the truth, you can actually receive it. The Bible has been unlocked. But, that, but it's only for those who seek righteousness and who is willing to receive the one who put the seal on the book, Christ himself. So until, I don't care what religion you are part of, until you except Christ, you will not see this book for what it is. You'll only see it dimly. But once you accept Christ, the seal is broken in your mind and you see the book for what it, what it, what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. right. Past, present, and future. So mm -hmm. if you go into the Bible believing that it was tampered with, it's the white man's book, it's really not Christ isn't savior. If you go into the Bible through a Jewish perspective of Judaism, you, you will never see the truth because they're taught to deny Christ. Right. Right. So you must accept Christ to actually see the book for what it is. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Read five. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the, the one on the, this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Verse 6, And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? How long? Now, these are angels. And it says, And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? How long shall it be until all is finished and Satan is taken down? And guess what? If you, if you understand Torah or Tanakh, understand if you know Torah or Tanakh, brothers and sisters, then you'll understand that those who are under Judaism, understands this they understand what I'm talking about right here that there's a certain amount of time they have before their God along with that priesthood the Moloch priesthood is done away with so they got a finite time to get rid of us Make no bones about it, folks. When they talk about global warming and there's too many people and sustaining the sustaining of the earth, they're not talking about the sustaining of the earth. They have no power to control the earth. They're right. talking about the sustainability of their power to control the people. To consolidate their power. And they measure that prophetically whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, they're losing power. And they have a finite time, according to prophecy, to get rid of the only threat that opposes their dominion in the earth. And it's their brother Jacob. Whether you believe it or not, let me show you. I'm breaking it down for you now. Read seven because this is a key point here, Elder Lawyer. 
Yes, sir. Verse 7. And I heard the man clothed with clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Stop right there. When he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. When you scatter a people, what are you doing? You're trafficking them. You're moving them all over the earth outside of their original home base. This is what the human trafficking is about, folks. I need y'all to think about this. They were always human traffickers under Satan so that they can scatter us away from the land to use, abuse us. Everything we're talking about that's going on with P. Diddy, they have done a thousand fold to our, to our people throughout history. Mm-hmm. They didn't only scatter us. They, they would abuse the little boys and turn them out. They would abuse the little girls and turn them out. How dare them come before us now to have us believe that our people are the face of, of, of sex trafficking and human trafficking. But see, but if you listen to the wizards and the sorcerers of, of dark forces, they would have you believe that we're the immoral, that we're the wicked because they have the control over media. And guess what? I, I make no excuse for sin when our people sin. That's not the point. But the question is, who perfected and taught our people the sin? Who perfected and taught our people about the parties and the secret parties and the initiations of Moloch? And the reason why they right. are, this and the reason why the man of sin must be taken down is because what? No soon as they burn one of their assets. Let me fix this camera here. One second. Hold on. There it is. No soon as they burn one of their assets, if we don't get to the controllers in the priesthood of these masters, right, and, and expose them, they'll only create another P. Diddy. They'll only create another Jay-Z to destroy and point to as the face of human trafficking. And I'm just using them as an example. We need to get to the, the overlords who raise P. Diddy's to demoralize and to, and, to, and to destroy our people through proxy, to have our people sin through proxy. Unless we reveal their overlords, their handlers, they'll only create another one. We're living in a different time now. We're living in a whole different time. At one time, everything they put out on the media and all that, we would just suck up and accept, even if it meant the degradation and destruction of our people. But we're in a different time now. We're not just going to take what they're saying on face value and turn on our people. And this is why they hate Christ, because why? Only Christ can accept the person who have done all this evil if they repent. See? And these people are ruthless. Okay? They're ruthless. They don't, they don't want a chance for repentance. They want to expose all the evil they have taught you to do. Only to have you get judged for the evil without an opportunity to change your life because this is how heinous and evil they are. And this is what happens when you're dealing with the people in whole as a religion who doesn't accept or believe in Christ.
Let's go back to Daniel. Oh, yeah. We're going to break this down today. Yes, sir. Daniel 12 and 7. Daniel and 12 I, and 7. Read it again. Yes, sir. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. That means scattering the people. What is scattering the people, folks? What is that? Let me show you what scattering the people is. Huh? Let's get it. Hold on. Let me show you what scattering the people looks like. What people? The people who would fulfill the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and go into captivity. So what's going on here? Daniel is showing you who the children of people, children of Israel are. He's also showing, showing the people of Satan who would be utilized to benefit from the fall of the children of Israel. It was prophesied that our people would fall for breaking the law, for walking away from the commandments, which, and which unites us under God. So part of that curse was Esau would gain dominion and he would be used to scatter us. That's slavery. That's slavery. And they would have you believe that all this was done by white Christians. See? See? Now, this was before Hitler, so Hitler's not in the, in the conversation. Let's look at all the people that died during chattel slavery and what people's and whose names were on the ships, bills of sales, and property at that time. Huh? So we're going to reveal the man of sin because it's the man of sin who's behind the confusion in the earth today. Right? We're going to reveal that man of sin using the Bible, the book they hate. And, re and it says all these things, read. Yes, sir. All these things shall be finished. All these things shall be finished. A time times in a half of times the trouble would be what from the time that christ was born up until the time he would return they would have that amount of time to get rid of the children of israel and it was prophesied out of the bible that's what this global warming stuff is about. That's what this sustainability stuff, the, the earth is too big and all the earth is the earth is too small and we're running out of resources. Lies, 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 lies. This is a religious attack against the children of Israel. And guess what? No one will understand it in the earth until that man of sin is revealed. Well, hold tight. Watch where we take this lesson. One moment. I'll be right back. I have one announcement and then we are diving in. It's not going to be a long lesson. Won't be long. This won't be long at all. We're going to cut. I'll cut all the way through today with this particular lesson. Believe me. Hold tight. We'll be right back. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that He used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify 
the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, the Hebrew and Bible Academy, brothers and sisters, you are invited. You are invited. Let's jump right in. One second. Hold on, let me cut off some of these lights. I'm too bright here. One moment. Cut off some of these lights here. It's better. All right. All right, Elder Lawyer, are you with me? All right, let's wait for Elder Lawyer real quick. Now, for those who missed it, let me go into it again while Elder Lawyer. One second. Okay, Elder Lawyer. Okay, he's back. Yeah. All right. So, let's go into it. Right? Until the time. So, we know that the powers that be under Satan would have what? They would have a space of time before the judgment on their God against their God, which takes dominion from them. Folks, the war in the Middle East right now, okay? The war in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine has nothing to do with Bible prophecy concerning the God, God's chosen people. This is a, what we see in the Middle East is a continual Roman conquest to put the whole earth under one order before the return of Christ. That's what we're witnessing now. A lot of our people ignorantly believe that the people over there in Israel are fulfilling some prophetic prophecy. And that's another thing. This is throwing shade and darkness on the God of the Bible. And they're doing that intentionally because they don't believe in the Bible. It makes everyone believe out there that this is a religious war. And this is why people shouldn't even follow that Bible. Look how many people killed in the name of religion. Folks, these people that are fighting over there have nothing to do with the, with the people of God. And I can prove it. Elder Lawyer, let's, let, let, let's, let's do some, let me show a few things real quick. Until the scattering of the people are accomplished. Well, let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about that. When it says until the people, the scattering of the people be accomplished, we have to look at the people of sin who are responsible, who are used in the earth to hurt and scatter us, right? So let's first start here if you will, right? Elder lawyer, if you will, let's now, a matter of fact, let's go, let's go into some of the interactions. Ho, ho, ho. Before I go there, let me first show here, I'm pulling this up. One second. Let me first go quantify in this with the fact that Edomites, who are modern-day Europeans, converted into Judaism around 175, around 2nd century, around 2nd century uh, A.D., I mean B.C., on the Herokinus, Right? So you would have white people for the first time identifying as Jews. Let's go there, right? 
real quick. Now, what I have in front of you, brothers and sisters, I usually do this in the academy, but for edification's sake, for those who are historic history buffs, this can help you quantify the Bible prophecies using secular history also, right? Because this is a part of history that they don't teach us in churches or in schools. When did white people become Jewish people? Okay. So they're not Jews according to the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. According to Jewish history, it tells us here. Here it is. Jewish encyclopedia. I'm not making this up. During the time of Herokinus. John Herokinus. It says besieged by Antiochus Sadites, forcibly converts of Edomites. So even in their encyclopedia, they're telling you well before Christ in the second century that there was a conversion of Edomites. Edomites are white people. Now let's look at this forcibly con converted. They don't talk about this in mainstream, uh, uh, on mainstream media today or in their universities. And it's intentional. It's intentional because if they speak of this conversion before Christ was on the scene, then people would know, okay, the prophecies of them in the Middle East isn't prophecies of the children of Israel because the Most High is not going to move Israelite prophecies to Edomites. And then we would question their true intentions over in the Middle East. Edomites are Romans. That means these Edomites who converted are the same bloodline of the white people of the Vatican. The Italians I'm talking about the, uh, not, I'm not talking about the black Italians who came in later. The original Italians under Zepho, Edomites, Europeans are the same people that are over there in the land today under that religion. And not because I'm saying it. It's because in their record, the Jewish encyclopedia tells you. Right now. And this happened under the Hasmonean dynasty. What is it? Converse forcibly converts the Edomites. Now they frame it forcibly because they really wanted to deal with, they deal with the religion. They always dealt with the, the religion they learned in Mount Seir, the religion of the Canaanites worshiping Satan, the same God they worship today. Right? And it tell you right here. Act after victoriously ending the war in Samaria, he proceeded to subdue the Edomites. Speaking of Herokinus. Always a menace to the southern parts of the domains with funds which he said to have obtained from David's supplica. He hired foreign troops, dismantled Odora and Marissa, the strong places of Edom, and forced the Edomites to accept the Jewish religion and submit to circumcision. So these were white people who converted well before Christ came on the scene. So at this time, they felt they were forced to do it. So did they really want to follow Torah? No. They did it politically to sustain themselves while living in the land of Judea. And we wasn't going to allow our brother Esau to live amongst us uncircumcised, worshiping Satan. This, folks, is your first mass conversion of white people into Judaism. So if these same white people would be living 2000 years later, you can't apply the prophecies of the children of Israel to these people. 
Okay, they will convert. They, it's, it's a religion for them. It has nothing to do with the bloodline prophecies of the Bible concerning genealogy. Are you following me here? Someone asked, how is Zepho spelled? It's, it's this. Zepho, Z-E-P-H-O. Uh, uh, Esau's grandson, Zepho, became the first magician, king of the palace of Atalia. Satan's stronghold that he that he placed in Italy became the Roman papacy well before Christ was on the scene. Okay. Now I'm going to say this, a lot of what we're dropping is serious mystery. And some of what we talk about is in the Academy. So if y'all don't, you, you can see we put this stuff together under the spirit of the almighty. Now the seals that are, were broken, right? So now jumping right into it, elder lawyer, right? So when Christ, by the time Christ came on the scene, there were white Jews on the scene who were really aligned with the Roman Empire. And there were disputes between Christ who was there for his people and the Jewish converts who were actually working under the interests of the Roman Empire who were what? Satan, Satan worshipers. See? The Romans were dealing with all types of debauchery and sinful natures amongst the Caesars and all that. Well, guess what? Amongst jewelry were the same private practices they had with the Roman empire. So Christ was like, well, hold up, hold up. I'm not going to allow you to get in the way of my plan for my people. So when you see those disputes in the new Testament, brothers and sisters, the majority of what Christ is battling against is these same people who converted, who were really against Jacob. And folks, they couldn't wait for Jerusalem to fall because once Jerusalem fell and we lost our identity, no one would question the people who were still practicing the customs of Judaism. By default, the whole world would believe that they are us. So how did they creep in and become God's people out of nowhere? The fall of Jerusalem. So elder lawyer, let's go through a few of disputes Christ was having with these converts, right? Let's go real All quick. Right. Chapter and verse. All right. We see John chapter eight, verse number 33. Thawada, Thaw let's go there. Take it down to about verse 44. St. John 8 and 33. Now, folks, what they would like to do in our modern time is to go into the Causarian conversion of Causaria. Now, let me make it clear. They converted there too. But that's a small conversion compared to the conversion during Herokinus, which led to millions of white people being, being called Jewish during the time of Christ. But there was a clear distinction between the two. Our people were in Judea. Horod, who came from Antipas and Edomite, they became the political construct to control Judea. So you had white people who were Jewish people who were separate from us as controllers. Similar to how the synagogue in our communities today politically runs the Freemasons in our community. They run the pastors in our community. It's the same construct from ancient Rome during the time of Christ. Okay. So they were they were, I would say, connected with us politically, 
but yet separate. Sort of how we see it today. They have their own communities. They deal with the social construct to control what goes on in our community, but they stay separate. That's, and now we, I'm giving you the history of how that political construct came to be. After the conversion, these Edomites, who now are called Jews, have aligned themselves with their brothers, the Caesars and all that, of Rome against us. And then the Roman Empire, Augustus and others, would place an Edomite as governor over Judea to politically watch and control us, even though they're brothers. But you, only, you, but you have one now calling themselves Jewish. Same people, same bloodline, but now they're working on either side. The government under Caesar, and now they're working inside over the Sanhedrin of our people. Working together, Edomites on either side to scatter us. They both were working together. Way back before chattel slavery, they were working together. The Caesars and the, Jew, the Jewish faith of conversion. Y'all with it? Don't, don't get any clear than that, right? Elder Lloyd, let's get St. John 8 and 44. Let's read it. Oh, let me get it here. St. John 8 verse 44. Yes, sir. St. John 8 and 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. This is why Christ called them out. Right? Don't don't try to don't try to fake it here with me. This is why they hate Christ, because Christ was able to see to their game, see through their games and expose them before the world. Christ was like, don't come up here, don't come up to me talking about Moses. Okay. When all the freak stuff y'all do behind closed doors with the Romans. Don't try to talk about law, law with us. See, ye are of your father, the devil. And now we understand who Christ was calling out. This is why they don't like him till this day. He exposed, he exposed their deceit before the world because they come unassuming as if they're for you or, or here to cooperate with you like we seen during the civil rights movement. See, ye are of your father, the devil. Read. And the lust of your father ye will do. Now, why did Christ say to them, and the lust of your father ye will do? Why? Check this out. Read it, Elder Lawyer. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now he's breaking them down. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now, those he's talking to know exactly what Christ is saying. Cain murdered his righteous brother Abel. And you people, Esau, is planning to murder your righteous brother Jacob. See? <laughs> they know exactly. Christ was pointing them out. So you're coming under the guise of the law claiming you're, you're dealing with Moses and you're righteous and all this other, but your plans, because don't forget, Christ could, could hear and see their thoughts. Your plan is to murder my people. See? Your, your purpose is to marry, I mean, it, 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 excuse me, is to murder my people people see they have a they have different types of laws brothers and sisters see if you're under christ then regardless of what happened you must forgive your enemy well suppose you have a religion under torah that says eye for an eye where there is no forgiveness so now they can look back at their father and what happened to their father esau losing the birthright 
losing the blessing, and now do what? Seek vengeance because there's no spirit of forgiveness in, within their theology. There is no spirit of forgiveness in their theology. So everything they do to destroy us is justified under the religion. See? So now Christ is pointing out to them. Their plans. I know what you're planning. You are your father, the devil. You worship Samuel. You worship the devil in secret. You sacrifice to Moloch. You live by triding yourself through blood. I'm going to show you. They live through blood, folks. And the lust of your father ye will do, read. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a, a murderer from the beginning, read. And abode not in the truth. And everything that you promote out there has an agenda, and it's a bold-faced lie. So if Christians understood this history we're teaching right now, when they speak through the devil's tongue, the media, Christians would understand they're being lied to and why they're being lied to. See? <laughs> See? I'm not believing anything you say. If I believe what you say, you can use the media to make us believe that our people who serve slavery is the face of human trafficking. When your people organize the trafficking of the children of Israel throughout the earth, that's why you cannot listen to anything they say. Okay, they use psychology. They use magic through tongue. Words as a tool to deceive the masses. They have the tongue of the serpent. And if you listen to them long enough, they'll convince you to take yourself out. And Christ understood their deceit. This is why they don't like Christ. Because Christ taught those, he taught his followers and those who were amongst them who believed in the true spirit of Torah and Tanakh. Not to trust anything they say. Because really they're seeking vengeance for their father, Esau. That's their true secret alliance amongst the Scottish and York rights of Freemasonry. So when I said we're going to reveal the man of sin, folks, guess what? We're breaking it all the way down. Because under the, under the Scottish and York right of Freemasonry, they don't allow black people in. Where the white Christian is willing to take the fall so that their overlords could work unscathed. See? It's one group that... They don't mind if you break down the white Christian and the white man is the devil and all that. But they'll work together to protect their priesthood. Their priesthood is whom Christ is exposing right here. See? He was a murderer from the beginning, read. And abode not in the truth. He's a liar. When, when is he lying? When his mouth is moving. That's when. Okay? They're behind rumor. They're behind innuendo. They, th th scandal. You name it, it's, you'll see them. You'll see them even if they put up one of our people to be the face of it. You'll see them. When are they lying? When their mouth is moving. That's when. Don't trust anything. Folks, do not trust what they're saying out there. Don't forget, it tells us in the Bible that, that, um, 
Satan is a principality in power and, and principality in powers of the air, the airways, the frequencies that he would use media to deceive the world. It's magic. This is how they have demoralized the earth and have done what? Exposed Jacob to sin. They have used many media to flip the script, to have everyone believe that our people are the sinners and they're the righteous. Read, because what? Because there is no truth in him. Because there's no truth in him. In him. He's a liar, the Bible tells us. See? He's a liar. So that's why I go back to the history of the, of the, of the beginning conversion leading up to what, when Christ had interactions with them. Right? Knowing their true intent was to set up a system that would one day destroy God's people who were scattered. So every place that they would go, they would set up uh, 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 satanic religious temples as well as hospitals. And the hospital part was for the science, not just to heal people, but to get the genetics of God's people who are scattered so that they can then begin to make weapons within the system that would destroy them. They would make it where certain diagnosis would be rampant amongst only a, only a certain people. You notice that? Because there's no truth in him, read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. And when he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of his own. Right? When he speaketh of a lie, he's speaking about himself. That's why you can't pin them down on one specific scenario when it comes to certain topics. Because what they're trying to do is get out of the lie. Okay? They're trying to get out of the lie that everyone, everyone actually see, understand, and hears. That's why they double talk. That's why, well, the meanings change. Oh, sometimes it's fluid. Some, you know, you know, sometimes this meaning can evolve. For he what? For he is a liar and the father of it. And this is why they wanted Christ out of the way. Why? Read. And because I tell you the truth. Because I believe, tell you the truth. What? Ye believe me not. You believe me not. You don't want the truth. Y'all don't want the truth. Folks, out of nowhere... And this is how you know the man that sinned, Elder Lawyer, is being revealed. Out of nowhere, Russia ha has opened up its vaults for the Russian icons. I have Russian icons here. We've been teaching this since the early 90s, what was in those vaults. Christ was a black man, 100%. He wasn't Middle Eastern. He wasn't olive tone. He, all this garbage. Don't you know the term Middle Eastern is a modern term for geography? You can't be from the land of Canaan, Israel, and not be a black man. Impossible. So it's all coming out. And guess what? I believe the Russians did this intentionally to cause disturbances. Right? Because you got a people in the Middle East fighting right now in Elder Lawyer and framed it through fake Christian theology, which it has been totally hijacked. They use their Christian right false teachers to say that this is some prophetic fight for the Holy Land with God's people and the Palestinians. That's nowhere in the Bible. I believe the Russians release a lot of this stuff because why? Because if we see a black man, black women, the disciples are all black, and these, and these pictures was, were unscathed not to be destroyed during the Renaissance period, then it will have the whole world questioning 
What is that battle over in the Middle East about? It would call to question what's going on over there. If it's not a prophetic, biblical uh, 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 restoration of God, according to the Bible, then this must be what? Something else. So they released the, uh, the Russian icons showing that what we've been teaching for a long time, that Mary, Christ, the disciples, they were all black people, which, which is Negroid people. So now it calls into question what the Hades is we witnessing over there because it isn't Bible prophecy. God's people have been scattered. Right? So now, Elder Lawyer, so Christ, yes, war Christ warned us in the book of Luke, go there real quick, when it comes to the book of Daniel uh, saying that, that the scattering must be accomplished, which is slavery and all that. Let's now go to the prophecy where Christ warned us that eventually our people, the children of Israel, the true children of Israel, would lose Jerusalem. Let's get it real quick. Yes, sir. St. Luke 21 and 20. Thank you, other lawyer. Let's grab it. All right. Hold on. Luke 21, verse 20. Luke 21, verse 20. Now, let's read it. Yes, sir. St. Luke 21, verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies... Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. When you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, know that the desolation is nigh. What desolation? Right? What desolation? I'm going to show you. Now, this is, folks, what I'm talking about right now is actually history you can research it's secular history. It's even Roman history. I got a, I got the Roman annals here. I brought these Roman annals in the Greek islands. So this is not just a biblical story here of how our people, black people, lost Jerusalem and eventually ran into different parts of Africa, Morocco, and other areas running during this persecution. Let's read it. Yes, sir. St. Luke chapter 21, verse number 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to, flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Come on. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Come on. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And wrath upon this people. Who is this? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. We ran into Africa. Okay. It's called the Siege of Jerusalem. Britannica history. Seas of Jerusalem. They call it the Jewish, but it ain't got to do with Jewish. The Judean Roman War of 70 A.D. This is when black people lost Israel. Being destroyed by European Romans. Okay. The siege of Jerusalem. Right. Now check this out. When you look into the siege of Jerusalem. Let me go back here real quick. When you type in, hold on, let me get it here. Siege of Jerusalem. Let me show y'all something real quick. When you go into siege of, 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 of Jerusalem or Rome taking out of, out of the temple, let me get that. 
when you go into it, let me pull up an image here. One second. I want, I want y'all to sh see this real quick. And this is from what? This is from Chabad.org, right? A Jewish circulation. So people cannot think that the Bible is tampered with and crisis prophecies aren't true. It shows the Romans going into the temple to commemorate this. They, they carved it on the walls of the Vatican showing white people stealing from the temple after the siege. Now this wasn't, Europeans sacking Jewish people. Huh? This is on the side of the Vatican. Is the temple menorah hidden in where? The Vatican. They took our gold and silver into Italy, into the Vatican. Jupiter's temple. That's what it was called at the time. It wasn't called the church of Peter. It was Jupiter's temple. So they, the, all the riches of Jerusalem are now owned by the Vatican. The Vatican has nothing to do with Christianity that was established under Christ. They, folks, they, they have all that gold. They have it. Now, here's the deep thing about it, Elder Lawyer. When you go back and read Christ's words, he prophesied this happened and given our people time to leave Jerusalem. Some of us who followed Christ knew to run into Africa. Mm -hmm. This is why you have the limba. This is why you have our people have been oppressed by and made third world and all of that intentionally by the Roman Empire until they could find a way to get rid of us all together. And if, hey, folks, so if Christ prophesied our fall, he would also give us insight on how to navigate through it. Right. Now, you would think Christians would teach this in the church. But guess who won't allow them to do it? See? The modern-day theologians who are also controlled by the same people. But woe unto them that are with child. And, and to them. Go ahead, Elder Lawyer. And to them that give suck in those days. Come on. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Speaking of the children of Israel, read. And they shall be led away captive into all nations. And they shall be led away captive into all nations. It's talking about the true children of Israel would go into slavery. So what people, how can these people, look, Blucher right here has, has a slave bill to be sold, to sell slaves. How can they be the people prophesied to go into slavery and the sellers of slaves too and, and set up the bill of sales and all that for the property of slaves? How can they be the children of Israel the people who would go into captivity and the people who would be out selling slaves and doing business when slavery was really one of the highest commodities during the, the, the 1600s and 1700s in which they were able to build their industries from. How can you now claim to be the people when you were the one selling the people? 
Hã? <risos> So, read that again, Elder Lawyer, because I need I need the optics of this picture to resonate with brothers and sisters. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Now, this is the deep thing about it. If you were a Judean, a black man of Judea, in 70 AD, when the Romans took you down, whether you be Pharisee, scribe, whether you be of Christ, if you look like this, it doesn't matter what sect you are of Hebrews, they was taking black people out of power. They were to sack the whole thing where there's no trace of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in authority within the borders of Israel. See, so by default, after they took down all of our people, elder lawyer, there will be one people left who was aligned with the Roman empire to, to now become the face of Judaism. Huh? So let's talk about it. So even after that, Elder Lloyd, let, let's go into it. So after we fell as a nation, get Revelations 12 real quick, Elder Lloyd. We go into the book of Revelations in a couple of minutes. Revelations 12, Revelations 2, 2 9, Revelations 3, 9. Mm -hmm. Now check this out. Now let's go into history leading to before chattel slavery, if you will. Who was the real Saint Nick? Pope Nicholas V and the Portuguese slave trade. Let's go down here. Let's go down right here. Where it goes into the history of 1440-41. Where they were taken slaves in 1442. Gungalis returned to Berber captives to Western Sahara, receiving as payments for enslaved sub-Saharan Africans, whom he then transported, transported back to Portugal for resale. Right? So you had what? You had their Saint Nick, the Roman Empire, Edomites, in the 15th century, selling our people to Portugal from Africa. Now, you notice at the same time that there was a conquest where the, where the Vatican would begin to send out uh, 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 explorers such as, and we all know he was Jewish, Christopher Columbus, to come and find people in the New World. So slavery with slave ships didn't start in the 1600s, folks. They were doing this in the 1400s at the same time that they were seeking to find the lost tribes of Israel, not just in Africa for slaves, but also to find the 10 tribes who were over here in the Americas. The accomplishing of the scattering of God's people. The book of Daniel. Here's your Saint Nick. Here's your Saint Nick right here. Huh? And we know that these blacks were the lineage of the Moors. The Moors were Israelites. Moors only meant mean black. So it wasn't just the Christians destroying our people, but the so-called modern day Christians was destroying our people under the Roman Empire, but also using the Arabs to do the same. The Arabs was set up to destroy us with a different religion funded by the Pope himself, funded by the Vatican. We don't care if they're modern day pagan Christians or if they're modern day Muslims, as long as they don't find out that they're from the lost tribes of Israel. Because it's our position to destroy the lost tribes of Israel, 
the ones in Africa and the ones who were scattered throughout the earth are prophesied to one day rule under Christ. So they, that's right, folks. I'm, I'm placing all of this in perspective for you. This is why Christ warned John on the Isle of Patmos. He warned us. He says, this, these, these, are, these are those Satan would use. So you must keep your eyes on these people because when my people fall, they're going to rise in their place. With a designated plan to destroy Jacob. That's why it reads in Revelations 2 and 9, hence the reason they don't actually teach from the book of Revelation, Elder Lawyer, in the Christian church. Because Christ has always pointed out their true plan against the chosen. Revelations 2 and 9, let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But thou art rich. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Now, why would Christ say that? Because these aren't the, the original people. These are the people who converted during the time of Herokinus in the second century. See, he says, I know that he, he says, I know what you're going through as my people. Christ stated, I know the tribulation and the poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are what elder lawyer are Jews and are not and are what? And are not. And are not. They're not from Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. But are what? But are the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue means chief house. This would be the high Masonic political house Satan would use to push his agendas in the earth in an effort to destroy Jacob. Synagogue means chief house. The protected temple. Ah, see, this is now we understand why there's a problem with Christ because he was, he was for his people. He was for justice, equity, he, you know, justice, being equitable, be it righteous, but he wasn't going to leave without giving us a clue to who to look out for. See, <laughs> true Hebrew says, I'm going to be in that next Hebrew and Bible Academy class. Oh yeah, I know you will. <laughs> and folks, don't forget folks, why they hate Christ so, why they reject him as Messiah, because he was prophesied to gather us together as we were under David that he would take the same people the physical Israelites who have followed Christ and put them back in the original place of promise on the earth see so they, so, so since it's talking about helping us the prophecies they say well listen they'd rather deal with the religion who, that loathes Christ, that hate Christ, because it doesn't give them the position they feel they should have had with their father Esau losing the birthright and the blessing. So they, they reject Christ because Christ gives dominion back to Jacob. So in their religion, you can't be a part of their religion and accept Christ as Messiah. Now think about that. Now suppose they take that mentality into the workplace, into industry, in, into politics. 
You can't tell me what they believe religiously doesn't transfer to, to how they operate in the secular world. God, people say, you won me here. <laughs> All praises be to the most high. So this is why they have a problem with Christ, because only Christ can expose them, folks. Only Christ can expose them. You cannot go to them to resolve the issues and understandings of the world pr prophetically. Christ told us you can't do that. He says the truth is not in them. <laughs> he says, guess what, folks? He says, listen, when they when he speak of a lie, they speak of, of their own and the truth isn't in them. So trying to get them to admit the truth, to try to get them to understand what their true agendas are is futile. You have to look at what they do. You have to look at all the money they would pay in industry and in the music business and all that and what they're pushing in the music industry to know what their true intentions are. If you're moral, you don't allow a system to, uh, to promote debauchery. You have to look into uh, the beginning of the pornography industry and see who's behind that, who's behind Hollywood and say, well, hold up. If you're moral, according to Torah, how can you in good faith compromise your morality and your belief of Torah to make money? So this must be deeper than money. It, this must be a more deeply rooted agenda outside of money. It seems, it seems brothers and sisters, as if they are incentivized for how many people they lead to hell. That's what it seems. Because if you have the power and influence of media, why not push family? Why, why even talk about trans and all this other stuff and give it, even give it any type of airplay in conversation? If you have the power over media, to actually just push forth righteousness. See? Now, brothers and sisters, we understand now why there's a problem when it comes to Christ and, 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 and those folks. But now let's identify them working in tandem with their God. And this is why they hate Christ. So elder lawyer, let's go to revelation 12. And not only this folks, it tell you, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I will blast me of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Unless you understand the history, you wouldn't know what Christ meant by this. These were those who converted during the time of Herokinus in the second century under the Hasmonean dynasty. By the time Christ came on the scene, they have already gained political status by the Roman Empire over the Sanhedrin to control our people in Judea. And eventually through their legislation and all that and then killing Christ, they will be utilized inwardly to work with the Romans to destroy us out of the land only to lead to both of them, the Roman Empire and the Sanhedrin controlling the slave trades watching our people at all times lying to us the whole time, miseducating our people the whole time, knowing that eventually a, the prophecies would come to pass where our people everywhere would begin to understand that hold up. They're not the people we are. See? Let's go to Revelation Elder Lawyer 12. And oh, yes, Re oh, Revelations 3 and 9. Yes, sir. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, 
and or not. Hold up, Lloyd. Hold up, Lloyd. Let's slow it up real quick. Because Christ, yes, Christ emphasized it again. Hence the reason why Christians are not told to read the book of Revelation. See? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, the chief house of Satan. Read. Which say they are Jews and are not. So they're telling everyone else they are. But Christ says, no, you're not. You convert it. But do what? But do lie. So Christ came back on the Isle of Patmos and reiterated this to John on the Isle of Patmos. My people are about to fall. Watch these people. Watch the people who are now propagated and promoted as the people above my people. The priesthood. They will be in charge of, 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 of the whole machine. That's why it says chief house of Satan. When it comes to industry, when it comes to political, when it comes to building, when it comes to uh, um, social constructs, when it comes to academia, the chief house will establish all of it. And the only way it'll come crumbling, crumbling down is when they're finally exposed. The protected priesthood for the longest by the world powers. See? And do lie, read. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now imagine that, brothers and sisters. They know that Christ is saying, nah. My people aren't going to bow and acquiesce to you. You antichrist are going to bow to my people. Now you think this is in the interest for them to teach the New Testament with them telling everybody in the world that they're the chosen? Think of, you think they haven't read this? The same people they're promoted as, as, as nothing. They only point out the subcultures within our community to make everyone believe that's who we are. And at the end of the day, Christ is saying these same people that you're demonizing through your media, the same people you've been destroying since we lost Jerusalem, I'm going to make you bow down to them. Now you see why they don't like Christ, folks, that they hate Christ. So that I'm going to tell you, so these people who aren't written in the book of life, who follow an antichrist religion, it's in their interest to get rid of these people. That's their religious mindset. How dare this, this Christ claim that he's going to have us bow to these blacks and respect and, and, and follow black people. Well, what do you think? It's not us you have to worry about. Why do you have a problem with, with, oh, I know what it is. You know that Christ was a black man. And now, even white Russians is exposing what we knew a long time. So you, you, you're racist. That's what's going on. <laughs> you're racist. Because you don't have no problem. You had no problem with our people bowing down to you as Cesar Boger. We loved Christ nonetheless when we thought he was a white man. That shows you that we're, we're not the racist. But soon as it comes out that we're the children of Israel, and we, we, we've always been, and that Christ is a black man coming back to help his people from, from the oppression and poverty and destruction, the, the, the social construct you've made in this earth to destroy us, now it's a problem. Why can't you accept a black man as Messiah? You're racist. We accepted white people. So who's the real racist here? Right? Elder Lawyer, let's go now. Yes, sir. Let's go to Revelation 12. 
Yes, sir. Revelation 12 and 1. And now, based on the prophecy, the prophecies here that Christ gave John on the Isle of Patmos, there's no rolling back the prophecies concerning what happens to them. And hence the reason why they, they reject the truth of the Bible. Because if the Bible is true, there's no rolling back prophecy. Everything the Most High said would happen to the earth, including them, has been sealed already. So what they do is try to do what? They just try to feign ignorant by, by rejecting the book altogether as, as if the prophecies aren't going to affect them anyway. Well, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, guess what? It doesn't mean the prophecies of the Bible aren't going to fall on you. Okay. So just because you can reject the Bible doesn't mean you can escape the, escape your future. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't mean you can escape your future. Okay. I don't care how many Israelites who claim that they didn't believe in Torah, Tanakh and the Bible. Guess what? The Bible said our behinds would go into slave ships and guess what happened? See, but now the curses are swinging off of us on to them. They can't bear the prophecies. The prophecies were okay when they benefited from our slavery. Right? But the judgment don't start, doesn't stop with us. It starts with us. The Bible says that he will start at his sanctuary, which means now the judgment comes on the world. If the Most High allowed you to do all of this to us, what do you think happens to you? Especially if you deny Christ. See? So right now they're in panic mode. The fact that they couldn't stop us from finding the truth, real, they realized that the God they kept us from is now communicating with us. See? So now they just throwing everything on the wall. Uh, transgender, man, woman, the bathrooms. Uh, uh, what else we got? What, uh, 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 tranny story time. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, what else can we do? Uh, let's run into a bridge. Uh, what, what else we got? What, what else we got going on here? Uh, what else can we do? Uh, oh, I know. Uh, 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 uh Palestine, Palestine, Israel war. Okay. You, you crazies. Open up the borders. Uh, what, what else can we do? What? It's like the Joker is at the helm. And we and our God is just sitting back just like this, like, okay. All right. I'm guiding my people here. I got them there. Hey, my people, stand packed and see the fall of this world as Israel rises. They throwing everything at the wall now. Oh yeah, there was a man in there, uh, uh, there was a man in Planet Fitness bathroom, you know, you know, with a tutu on. They t folks, I'm gonna tell you, this is what happens when you lose control altogether and have no answers. They're just throwing everything at the wall now, and our God is just sitting back and saying, "Okay, we're not dealing with all this madness, your media madness. Come on, Israel, come to the truth." Stand on morality, stand with Christ and watch the most high raise you from the ashes. Watch this world crumble as Israel rise. Huh? They throwing everything at the wall now, hoping and they want it to stick to us. Oh, yeah. P. Diddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Homeland Security. They, black people are the face of human trafficking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black people are the face of human trafficking. Yeah. And so whose name is on the bill of sale? What people were in charge of this human trafficking? Huh? And what is P. Diddy doing compared to this? What people was in charge of this human trafficking? Huh? We're not buying it. What we're saying to all of our brothers who've been utilized by the system, 
These were your forefathers, the children of Israel, who were brought through chattel slavery. And regardless of your, the alliances you made walking in sin, Christ, Christ gives you an opportunity to lay down all your riches, if need be, and repent for your sins. And he'll still raise you as a child of Israel unscathed. Whether it be P. Diddy, whether it be uh, whoever it be, if they repent from their sins, Christ will still accept you. And see, they hate that because there's no forgiveness within their religion. Going to try to make our people the face of human trafficking. Are you kidding me? Whose names, who, who names were on the bill of sales? Who had the cotton fields and the rice fields in South Carolina and Virginia? Are you kidding me? We ain't going for it. They can still be forgiven because at least they accept Christ. At least they know that Christ is an option. So folks, don't let the liars out there hold the narrative when it comes to tainting our people as human traffickers and all this crap. OK. Because because what story they was hiding. While they were what, what story were they hiding in the midst of this P. Diddy Homeland Security? Pedos. Nickelodeon hired and worked with pedos. Right. Who's this guy? Why, what, what was it? Homeland Security in his house. Huh? Look at this guy. Oh, let's go. Come on. Look at this guy. What's this guy's name? Brian Peck? Brian Peck? I hey, I wonder what I wonder what church he go to. We're not going for it. And again, not that I would excuse anyone doing anything wrong regardless of your persuasion. But we need to get, we need to expose the people who taught P. Diddy about these private satanic parties. His handlers, his groomers. Because why? I said it earlier. They'll get rid of P. Diddy while grooming another one to operate in his place against us. So getting rid of P. Diddy isn't going to do it. Because they're already grooming someone to take his place. We need you to expose the groomers first or get out of our face. Huh? Elder Lloyd, let's, let's wrap it up. Yes, sir. Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and 1. Read. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And that 12 stars represents the 12 tribes of Israel, the physical people. It isn't no metaphorical. It isn't no spiritual 12 tribes like the fake Christian church been teaching. It's speaking of the actual people. Read. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wanderer in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, the great dragon represents an empire, seven heads and ten horns. Well, the seven heads represents the seven mountains of Rome. The ten horns represent the original EU of Europe. Edomites, red. Read. Four. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And when it says the third part of the stars of heaven, the same God over the Vatican, over the EU, was Lucifer who fell in the beginning. That's their God. Satan is their God. Under the Jewish religion, his name is Samael. So who is Samael? Who is Samael? One might ask, 
One might ask, well, who is Samuel? Because, you know, we're not taught, you know, the, the in-depth, there's no in-depth teachings within our modern day Christian churches. And I believe that's intentional. No disrespect to the pastors who are trying, but we have very minimal uh, a theological uh, 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 understanding within the Christian church. Okay. And, and the black Christian church, mind you. Right now, when you look at this, right, Samuel. Now we all know who Samuel is, right? Samuel. Now he's Lucifer or Satan, according to Christian uh, understanding, but Samuel is an angel who's taught within Judaism, right? As something different. They don't believe in a bad devil type of God. Why? Because they don't want to admit that the God they worship is a bad, evil spirit, right? So when you go here to Samuel, right right but there's something in particular right samuel right let me let me let me let me drop something on y'all real quick he's talk about in the in the time mood he's a seducer right he's all that but check this out bear with me right look at this it tell you right here, look at this. In the Madras Konin, the Madras Konin is Jewish literature. He is the ruler of the third hell. Several sources, such as Zakut Shamoni, Jewish, describe him as the guardian, hold up, as the guardian angel Look, the guardian angel of who? The guardian angel of Esau. The guardian angel of Esau. The Edomites or Esau, a lot of them converted into Judaism in the, in the second century. So Satan was their God at Mount Seir. Relating him to Rome, seven heads and ten horns. Satan is the is is the ruler, the ruler spirit of the Roman Empire, the Vatican, and the Pope, as well as those who are over Jewry today. The, these are the Edomites who converted to Judaism. Satan is their god. Now you see why. There's so much evil pushed in the world. Satan is their God. They secretly worship him, folks. All right. So let's go back to the book of Revelation. Let's hit it. Come on. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12. So when it says in the fourth verse, Elder Lawyer, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, it's speaking of Samuel, Satan who fell in the beginning with one third of the angels. They became the first rulers who were operating in the city of Cain, the land of Nod. See? And eventually they would cook up, co concoct a plan, folks, that would deceive the earth so that they can build technology for them to get back out into the sides of the north. But if you want more details on that, hey, you got to get in the academy now. HistoryTimes.org. Let's go. Revelation 12 and 5. Yep. And she brought forth no, no, a no, mansion. No, 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 read 4, the whole thing. Verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And it says what? It says... The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. 
for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So the Edomites had what? Herod the Greek or the great imposition to kill Christ, knowing the prophecy that this was the child that was prophesied in the Old Testament to one day unite the children of Israel on the earth as it was under David. So the Edomites had what? You got it. And I do me in, in place. Herod to kill the baby. No wonder why they, they have laws in our country that makes it okay to do the same. And, and, and guess what? Come to find out that tens of millions of our children had no opportunity to breathe there. It's all coming. Folks, are we tying this together for you? My body, my choice. Until they're pushing something down your throat. Until, until they want you to choose. They want you to choose what they want you to do with the, your body. But when it comes to a baby, well, no, she can choose. Read. Verse five. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The resurrection, he, he appeared before the disciples and then what? He went into heaven to rule from there until a times, times and a half of times are fulfilled. The consummation. We're near the end of that time, folks. Read. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she have a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So when they came against us, we would eventually flee into the wilderness, right? Elder lawyer, go down to the 12th verse. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. So when Christ shed his blood on the heavenly tabernacle, time began to tick down on the Roman Empire as well as the God they serve. So this is why they're throwing everything at the wall, for folks, because they're at the end of the time Christ have allowed them. See, they know their time is short. Once people started figuring out that they weren't the people, I'm going to tell you, all the things they tried to do in the earth beca be be became harder. Because at one point, they could justify a lot of their action by claiming it was some Bible prophecy to justify what the whole world seen as injustices. See? But once we start, once the Most High began to awaken his people all over the earth, they can no longer hide behind the Bible for what they were doing in the name of Satan. See? <laughs> like, nah, what you're doing over there have nothing to do with Bible prophecy as far as God's people. God's people went into captivity. As a matter of fact, what you're doing to, the, to, to these other people, you've always done against us. Even back in slavery. So, no. We're not going for it. So when they hijacked the churches through false theology, they would, they would, they was able to teach this restoration of prophecy that never happened. How can you be restored before the Messiah comes? That's a bunch of bogus doctrine. That was bogus. There's no restoration without a Messiah. Mm -hmm. Huh? So now, and then guess what? No soon as they figured out that the world knew that we were Israelites, they said, well, we don't care about the Bible anyway. We're atheists. Okay. We, we follow Talmud. All right. <laughs> right. Who cares? We were able to achieve politically what we wanted to while you people slept. So who cares? We got the land now. We just needed you for the political optics 
at the time when we were trying to get the land. We needed Christians everywhere to get behind us and say, go God's people. See, it was all a PR move using the Christian church. Right? It was a PR move. So they don't care if you know now. They're like, well, okay, who cares now? We got the land now. So who cares about whether or not you're behind us? Right? Let's go. Yes, sir. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that it was he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So when he saw, when Satan now realized he had no more entry into the heavens to accuse the brethren, because once Christ went to the throne and shed his blood, the gates were shut. Where now they have no access before the council of God. So when he knew he couldn't go up or come down or go into Hades, when he, Satan Samuel is trapped on the earth now. So he says, well, since I couldn't kill Christ, we'll have a plan to kill their people. And I have about 1,700 years to finish it. See? So he says, well, listen, I couldn't get him, but his people are here. So I must plan how to destroy, and de destroy them or deceive them into destroying themselves. So anything that's countered law of God will promote. We'll put finances behind. If it's debauchery, if, if it's inordinate sexual behavior, if, if it's if it's murder, we'll finance it against God's people. See? So it says once they couldn't kill Christ, they say, you know what? Well, his people are still here. Let's get let's get them. Let's focus on them, right? So, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, the woman is Israel, which brought forth the man child who brought forth Christ. So they couldn't kill Christ, but now they're going after Christ's people. Read. 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent. So the most high had us scattered all over the earth while the Roman Empire would send what? Explorers to find us. See? To destroy us, to set up a plan in the earth before the very end to get rid of us all together. When it says the face of the serpent, well, do you know that the Vatican, when you look at that area of the Vatican where the, where the Pope is, that it, it was called the Serpent Temple? Do you know in Causaria, where there was another conversion of European uh, whites uh, between the 8th and the 11th century under Causaria, that they were called the Serpent People? The auditorium of the Vatican right now when you look up the auditorium of the Vatican, it looks like the face of a serpent. Right? Now think about that. The, the head of a snake. Now, some people might ask, well, okay. And, and, and I got this for you too. A lot of people don't even know that the Causarians that converted were from the remnant of the Basilians. The Basilians in 230... These, I mean, A.D. left Rome and went into Causaria to continue to practice the, the secret satanic worships of Mount Seir or the Canaanite religion. Moloch sacrifice and all of that. And those were the Causarians. They weren't the original people of Causaria. They were sent in under Basil, St. Basil, by the Roman Empire and became the Causarians. They converted between the 8th and 11th century and became Jews, adding to the other Jews who were converted years ago before Christ. Huh? So when we talk about the man of sin being revealed, folks, we, we got all the history. We, 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 we have tracked Esau. Another term they have for themselves in secret 
are the serpent people, the children of Satan. Right? Let's go with the lawyer and the serpent. Yes, sir. 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as flood or water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, when it says, and the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman, it's speaking of the lies that will be taught through academia as well as religions. Okay, what, when they find our people, they will be to, they'll begin to indoctrinate them with false religion as well as false education. So to keep us from the knowledge of our true origin as God's people. The flood is the lies that came from the Vatican, the Christian church, their educational systems. Read. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And when it says, and the earth helped the woman, it's speaking of what? It's speaking of the records that was hid in the earth by the Essenes, or the sons of Zadok, the Levites in Jerusalem. Records like the Dead Sea Scrolls, Jasher, Enoch. You put that information together along with the Bible and you have the true doctrine that was lost before the fall of Jerusalem. This isn't speaking of Russians coming with Russian icons. This is speaking of doctrine. That you would have the records the Essenes had sealed. And at the very end, the Most High would reveal this information so we can put the whole puzzle together. Okay. Read. Verse number 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Hold up. Which keep hold, up the hold up. And the dragon was wroth with Israel now. And this is their true intentions, folks. I'm speaking of the man of sin. The man of sin. He's against those who do what? The remnant of her seed. So there's a remnant out of. Here's a remnant of the seeds they're seeking to attack, folks. Who? Which keep the commandments of God. Which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Yeshua Mashiach. This is their true focus, folks. To get rid of the Israelites or people, even the Gentiles, who follow the commandments that was given to Moses. And along with that, have the true testimony of Christ before the fall of Jerusalem. Because they understand these two points together exposes all of what they're doing. And on top of that, these have the knowledge to overcome their conspiracies against the children of God. And see, it tells us in the book of, uh, Thessalonians that Christ cannot will not return until that man of sin be revealed. Now, if you don't know who that man of sin is, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> if you don't know who that man of sin is after this lesson, then I don't know. I don't know how much more we can do to convince you or have you know that it's the people whose religion is antichrist above all. Hence the reason why they have Hindus in your neighborhoods now. They have Buddhists in your neighborhoods now. And guess who do you think allowing all these people to come over and press us in the community? This is a religious war. This is a war, this is a war against those who predominantly worship Christ in the earth. Think about that. Uh huh. Well, Elder Lawyer, are you ready for tomorrow? I know I am. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Well, I thank you, brother. I know you would have came if, if I would ask, but I thought I would give us one more day so that I can just get over whatever I'm good. And tomorrow, I'll be I'll be raring to go. Absolutely. Okay, tomorrow we'll have a roundtable discussion, the battle between man and woman, 
how can we come on one accord, uh, one accord with the Almighty before the judgment? Right? Well, Shalom, may the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not, brothers and sisters. We will soon see Zion. Shabbat Shalom. And today, understand, the man of sin have been revealed. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. 